Welcome to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. If you are new to this channel, then please subscribe to our new to YouTube channel so that you can be notified every time we upload a new video. I use my YouTube and Facebook Live to stream my podcast. Tonight is a special segment. Happy 29th anniversary, Gurkham. First, I would like to give a special shout out to our contributors, Evangelist Stephanie O'Neill, Missionary Savannah Rush, Evangelist Martha Mumba, and Sister Renee for working with me and making this possible. Our goal for 2021 is to move Gurkham forward. We need more contributors from the group. We, we need all hands on board. Our accomplishments in 2020 are as follows. May 1st, 2020, our 501c3 application was approved. We opened our business account in order for us to receive donations through PayPal. We launched our virtual store and teamed up with Teens, tea springs to help advertise and sell our merchandise such as a COVID mask, coffee mugs, posters, handbag, and t-shirts. All proceeds would go towards our film project. We created a Patreon page as well. Our goal is to raise 500000 for our film project, Hood Liberator Made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch Begins. We are, we are sincerely grateful to all of our supporters, no matter how big or small the donations are. I am encouraging everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups to please purchase my ebook on Amazon. It's available for $9.99. This will help. Also, this will help us get the ebook on the bestsellers list so that people can take our cause serious. Our objective is to get our film project fully funded and play it by ear during the COVID-19. Once this virus is cleaned up, then we will shoot our film and promote our film in selected movie theaters and sell our DVDs. Together, we will put Gurkham on the map and turn my vision for Black America into a reality. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving Black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and ordinary law abiding citizens an opportunity to share their special talents and skills to my listeners from the podcast community. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcast and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships, grants, housing, and legal services all for free. A Christian business, Gurkai of Chicago, or the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago will be in the business of creating docudramas, short films, theater, photography, fine arts, music, po poetry, literature, sculpture, and dance for inner city youth. Once this virus is cleaned up and we plan we plan on launching African tours in order for us to move from behind the computer and make real connection with our global black family on the continent, starting with South Africa, in order to build a bridge between the diaspora and continental Africans. I created GERCAM, the grassroots community activist movement, because I got tired of all of the vision among black people. Pan-Africanism was not working for black Americans. I wanted to start a new movement for black people to unite us based on individuals who care about solving black issues. I created Gurkham in 1991 on a site called Gopher. I wanted to create an organization that focused specifically on solving black issues in America. I wanted to connect with other like-minded African-Americans, Afro-Brazilians, Afro-Canadians, Afro-Caribbeans, Afro-Europeans, African immigrants, Afro-Latinos throughout the African diaspora. 
The Grassroots Community Activist Movement is an interactive virtual Christian socialist organization using my Christian groups and secular groups to network on a global level. The CAM is a revolutionary 21st century kingdom building global black unity and black empowerment in order to solve social problems within the black community and throughout the African diaspora. The CAM is the virtual Christian socialist organization. For me, Christian socialism is an authentic form of Christianity. A Christian socialist is a form of Socialism based on the teachings of Jesus. Many Christians, Christian socialists believe that capitalist, capitalism is adulterous and rooted in greed, social inequality, and institutionalized racism, which most Christian denominations consider a moral sin. We will focus on what we stand for, that is love, compassion, social justice, and liberation theology. Jesus told us to focus on the least of these in the city, according to Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, 35 through 40. He also commanded us to be witness to others, not just for us to read his word, but to activate social change in the world, according to Matthew 28, verse 16 through 20. We will be committed to the healing ministry of Jesus by showing compassion to inner city youth and their families, which will promote dignity to the people and community we will serve. We will promote an authentic form of Christianity, which is for me, Christian socialism. We will emphasize the importance of morals and character, character development for both Christians and non-Christians. We will also focus on strengthening the black family and focus on solving black issues by promoting a black economic agenda. I try to explain my group to my group members that Nehemiah did not rebuild the wall of Jerusalem by himself. He had bricklayers, engineers, and architects. Likewise, I want middle-class black professionals who have the following credentials. Investors, business partners, black entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, and philanthropists. I'm also looking for legitimate film producers, actors, stage managers, grant writers, fundraisers, technical directors, marketers, accountants, business administrators, and social workers, financial planners, lawyers, real estate brokers, and insurance agents. I have my articles of incorporation and my bylaws typed and available for my nonprofit cooperative. I also have my articles of, organiz of organization typed and available for my for-profit service-based business. I encourage all of my Christian friends to uh, read Exodus chapter um, 36, verse 1 through 5. Um, coming from the, I guess, it's the NIV, the New International Version. 29 years is a jail sentence. If it was up to me, everyone in my groups would do their part and support this organization by purchasing my revised book and share my podcast with, with their friends. This will help get the ball rolling. My film is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group in America. Before I cut and run to Africa, I want to do something to help my people who are trapped in American ghettos by setting up satellite communities within the inner cities. When I see something I don't like, I fix it. I was, I was not called to start a small storefront I'm called to unite the global black family and help solve our social issues domestically and internationally. Middle class black, middle class Africans and their politicians need to do a better job as it pertains to trickle down economics in order to make sure they're providing opportunities and not just hoarding all the resources. It's my hope that through GERCAM we can form a global black union. We have been lacking leadership and organization since the 60s. Well, Gurkham is on the scene and we will promote a 21st century rev revolutionized mindset in order mindset to our members. Gurkham wants to make a, a change that will be meaningful and relevant towards the development of Africa. 
we have to work together and teach the next generation growing up. Amazon started off with selling books. Now look at where they are today. Akon saw a, a need with his solar light in Seattle, in Senegal. Now they are naming a city after him. Ruger Cam, I'm trying to raise the bar in black America and Africa and in the Caribbean. Our goal is to help our people globally, whether they are on the continent or in the diaspora. We're working hard to create a platform for black and African people. A majority of our people are getting their information from mainstream media. We've got to work as a cooperative. One of our major problems is that we don't think on a global level. We usually only focus on local at the local level. The financial elites want to see us divided and view our view ourselves as different. The Chinese model in Africa is we will help you, then charge you something that you can't afford, then we own it. They are discriminating against continental Africans and they are not patronizing African businesses. I mentioned this in my revised book, how the Berlin Conference of 1884 created a plan for Europeans to keep Africa poor while they loot Africa's natural resources. We're going to have to do, we're going to have to be that talented tent in order to re rebuild Africa. We as the diaspora need to get involved with making our presence known on the continent so that we can compete with non-black foreigners. We have to, if we lose Africa, we lose everything. We need to study the Miranda 46. That was a plan during the Jim, Jimmy Carter administration to implement policies to divide us from Africa. When I start talking about black empowerment, many black Americans avoid me in real life and online. Your average African American only focus on getting jobs and want white people to treat them nice. They are not trying to be liberated. We have been, we have to start looking at the future 100 years from now. What are we going to leave for our children? There are several, there are things we can do on a micro level and on a macro level. If black people start organizing and stop fighting, then we can make progress in our community and in Africa. We need to start thinking globally because every other group send money back to their homeland except us. Other groups who are coming to Africa, they have wealth and they have a nation. We don't have nationhood because we're not unified. The financial elites have conditioned us to be divided based on social class, religion, and political affiliation. What I'm trying to do through GRCAM is called transferable skills, which is the exchange of information from my online resources to my, to my group members worldwide. We as black people, African people have to understand that we're in an economic game. Economics is about the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. GRCAM is about promoting black empowerment and economic empowerment. I am called by Yahshua to move beyond the four walls of the church and make an impact in the black community and in the economy through my Christian business known as the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. Grkai, or the Grassroots Community Activist Institute, is based on my experience we will not focus on black celebrities, but rather ordinary black law buying citizens by providing affordable access to state of the art, um, rental, co-working spaces, production studios, and office suites, educational service services, financial resources, and dedicated community mentors. Gukai will have a nonprofit cooperative sector and also a for profit service based sector. Gukai will have five components a social service component, a spiritual component, which will be 
optional for secular people, an entertainment component, an entrepreneur component, and a political component under the for-profit service-based uh, sector. In time, a health and wellness component and a media component. Under the for-profit service-based sector, we will offer state-of-the-art recreational center that will offer bowling, high ropes, and adventure course, captivating game rooms, featuring the latest video and amusements, st stylish, uh, billboards, um, energetic dance rooms, and high-quality restaurants. Various businesses, on-site child care, and on-site music recording studio for our students making documentary films and stage plays. In addition, we will host family fun activities, including accommodation deals, birthday parties, weddings, and corporate parties, or events. Under the nonprofit cooperative, Kirkai will be governed by an advisory board. Kirkai will be membership based and operate for the mutual benefit of our members. Also, any earnings we make are return on are returned to our members in the form of lower prices through our quality programs and services. Our focus is on providing quality goods and services to the low-income African-American community and work directly with black families that want to utilize our programs and services. Finally, I, um, I want to make Chicago a, a model first before we expand to at least five cities in America, God willing. The Grassroots Community Activist Institute objective is to become the heart of the black community starting on the west side of Chicago, specifically in Austin, Garfield Park, and North Mondale. Kai also plan on expanding to the south side of Chicago and send scouts to help replicate the business in order to make Chicago a model for other cities in America. We kind of will function in the areas of community co-op, community grocery stores, community health care, and community housing. Kirkai will operate on two fronts, a domestic front and on an international front. On a domestic front within the United States, we want to create a sense of national urgency about the genocide which is taking place within our inner cities in America, starting in Chicago. We will push for social change through our stories using media and advocacy. We will achieve this through our film, stage plays, journalism, to change the narrative. We will strive to educate and enlarge our audience of concerned citizens who care about solving black issues in America. We want to eradicate urban violence in Chicago through our programs and services, tackle poverty, institutionalize racism and police brutality within the black community, promote economic opportunities in the African-American community by becoming an advocate, offer stipends and resources for our members, offer a second chance program for ex-offenders non of nonviolent crimes, for, for former gang members and homeless individuals within the community, provide programs and services to strengthen the, the black family by creating jobs and building a strong economic base to heal collect collectively from this Willie Lynch mentality in America and also on the continent heal from this colonized mentality. To examine the Amish community, the Asian community, and the Jewish community so that we can practice group economics and form our own code of conduct. To get our house in order first before we invite non-black sympathizers into our space. Now on an international front, I'm just calling it Grakai of Africa, but um, it's really going to be called Grakai of South Africa, because that's where we're going to start off at anyway. But uh, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Africa, we plan on hiring African immigrants in America to encourage the diaspora to set up a chapter in South Africa and eventually in nine other African nations, beginning with... Um, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, 
Angola, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Uganda. I'm encouraging my international friends to put pressure on on African governments to allow the diaspora to have citizenship within five years if they are serious about us doing business on the continent. Kirkai of Africa will go through the proper channels with the African governments to start our NGO, non-government organization. Um, we, um, we want to work with our disadvantaged brothers and sisters in the in the uh, society to improve the and enhance the capability uh, for self-development to promote Kirkai of Africa to the African people to fight against corruption to nurture young Africans by conducting mentoring programs and various youth activities to promote education through establishing learning centers group donations book donations to enable them to achieve their academic goals, to promote health among the people living in rural and low-income urban areas by organizing for medical camps and health awareness uh, campaigns, to participate in various economic activities geared toward improving the standard of living among people in low-income rural and urban centers. The Kai of Africa will offer private employment to our members based on our budget and sponsorship. We will provide infrastructure for building bridges, roads, power lines, clean running water, after cultural technology, solar and wind energy to help our members with their electric generators. And most of all, help improve the African economy as well as educate the people about the problems with capitalism. In time, we plan to expand to Brazil and Pacific places in the Caribbean such as Barbados, Bahamas, Haiti, and Jamaica. It's not my burden alone, but rather a shared burden, for I am just one black man with a vision and a plan. It takes a team to make a dream work. The CAM is a global community of thinkers and builders. I need your help to move your CAM from behind the computer into our urban communities that need our talent and skills. The Grassroots Community Activist Institute will be membership-based. Everyone will be screened and must attend a mandatory orientation and sign the community pledge. No exceptions, no hardened criminals, no, act no active gang members, no urban terrorists, no pedophiles, and no house steppers allowed in my organization. This is how I get down. This is my contribution back to my community, society, and throughout the African diaspora. Now, the, I'm ready to uh, open up the phone lines for Q&A. And uh, hopefully, you know, I get more, you know, people to call in and I can, ask, um, if they have specific questions, I can um, answer those questions. And um, again, I don't want to be doing this another 29 years. Like I say, our focus is, you know, going to do this film, and I want to see how that get played out. Um, but I've done the best that I could, you know. I mean, I'd rather be over there on the continent, but um, I can't even go to the continent because I'm on a shoestring budget. So, you know, it's just really rough. But um, I'm doing the best that I can within my power. You know, again, a lot of our people here in America you know, they, they, a lot of us have become Americanized, so, you know, and, you know, that Willie Lynch mentality has really hurt our racial group big time. But um, I want to reach, um, I would say, the black millennials as well as Generation um, Z. That's who I want to reach because I was unable to reach my generation, which, which is Generation X. I just wasn't able to reach them. And that's that's fine, but um, I do want to see our people progress in this world, you know. And um, I I really hate to see people being treated like um, third, fourth, and fifth class citizens when you don't really have to be treated that way, you know. They only doing I mean the financial elites is uh, only doing this stuff because you know um, black Americans allow them to you know treat us that way. God has freed us. You know, the 400 years is up. And um, again, all I keep saying is that we have to pull our resources together and 
uh, I can't help everybody. Again, you know, this is going to be membership based, and so I'm only responsible for my members. Um, I want to make sure that we do these African trips so that way people that's in our in, in, in the inner cities as well as our middle class black um, brothers and sisters, they're welcome to come along as well. And also, you don't have to live in the ghetto to be part of this organization. But again, my focus is just helping the people, you know, from where I came from. I didn't go to college just to, you know, you know, be putting people down and say, hey, I've made it out the ghetto. You can, you know, you can do that to yourself. You know, um, I'm not like that. Um, also, you know, if our grandparents had that this type of mindset, this Willie Lynch mindset that we have today, well, you know, um, being all totally um, divided and everything, there would never have been a civil rights movement. We have to think collectively. And uh, it's not easy, it's rough. But again, I'm going to do the best that I can within my power. Again, you know, if it was up to me, I mean, this organization would have been up, up and running years ago. But um, this is my challenge. So um, this is what I want to be remembered for, trying to do something, not just sitting up here complaining about the white man and the government. And... Uh, I'm grateful to have this show. I mean, this, you're going to see that, you know, um, Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos. You know, I it was on Blog Talk Radio. Then we moved to um, the other one was called Speaker. Then um, we moved to Mixed Cloud. And now we're on Anchor. So, you know, I'm doing the best that I can and, you know, I'm grateful for this uh, opportunity and I'm trying to share my knowledge with people, you know, um, trying, that's my way of giving back, trying to be a blessing to others. But again, you know, I want to just turn my ideas into action. That's why I want to focus on this film thing and um, to get us, you know, this organization on the map generate the capital that I need so I can be in a better position financially to hire qualified people. So that way we could um, get this thing popping. So with that said, I'm opening up the phone lines right now. All right, we have one of our biggest con contributors, Sister Renee. You're on the line. Good evening. Hey there. Brother Emmanuel Barber. How are you doing? Happy anniversary. Happy 29th anniversary. Thank you very much. So I, I want you to tell my my listeners um, your experience about, you know, working with the cam and all that stuff. Please. <clears throat> my experience is... Um, I have enjoyed working with you. It's been a joy, it's been a pleasure. Um, but it is hard working, it is tiresome at times. Uh, but I'm thankful to the Lord for your vision and that you are dedicated and faithful to what He wants you to do. And she says in uh, Matthew 25, 23, this Lord said to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So that definitely hits you that you, are, you have been faithful for to your vision for 29 years, and I know the Lord is going to open that door. Whenever He see fits to open it, He's going to manifest everything that He wants. Uh, <clears throat> so you just keep tearing, and the Lord is going to give you all that your heart desires, and all that you pray and and pray for. Amen. I received that. Is there any? 
Matthew 6, 33 said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In Hebrews 11, 1, just keep this in your heart. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So this uh, vision of Burkham, Burkai, you've been hoping on it, you have faith, and the evidence is going to be uh, manifested by the Lord Jesus Christ. So just keep holding on to him. And we shall surely come to pass. And I just pray that um, more of your um, supporters, viewers, listeners, group members, um, strangers, people that don't even know you, that um, that they will join in and be a part of it. If they can't do nothing else, they'll lift you up in prayer. So if we if people can't give us anything else, at least they uh, go to the throne of God and, and lift you up in prayer. Because when there's two or more, he will be in the midst. So that's what I pray. That more people will join in and mostly more people will just lift their name up to the Lord in prayer. Oh, amen. Lift you up, um, not only for financial, but just lift you up to be a strong leader for the Lord. Every way, and direct your path. Amen. So you, are, you are a man of standard. You, uh, I pray more men would be like you and uh, be God fearing and just uh, kind hearted and loving. Well, Sister Renee, again, I'm glad to have you uh, on the show, um, and you've been a very big, um, you know, contributor to um, this organization. I just wish that also the Lord would send me more people such as yourself, and... Um, most of all, I just uh, be glad that um, that all of my um, group members worldwide would you know take what I'm doing serious. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I'm not on here playing games. Yes. These, these are real hard times, and you know, especially with the, we're now dealing with COVID nineteen. This if this doesn't wake up black people to unite and work together, I mean, I don't know what else will. But again, you know, um, I don't plan on doing this another 29 years. Um, I'm, like I said, I want to focus on that film and, you know, raise the capital for that and um, do the best that I can, you know, to get this organization started in the city of Chicago. That's, you know, like, like I said uh, in the book, you know, but, um, you know, this is spiritual warfare at its best. Yes. I touch and agree with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, is there anything else you want to say before um, I um, take another caller? Um, just um, pray that peace be multiplied to you. Amen. Well, thank you um, again, Let's sister. Stay strong in the Lord. Yep. Thank you again, Sister Renee, for coming on the show and. Um, you know, whenever you feel led to uh, come on here to, you know, share um, some encouraging words or some, um, if you want to share scriptures, sermons and, and what have you, just let me know. Because that's what this show is all about. It's about giving people an opportunity to make their voice heard. Thank you, Brother Barbie. All right. Okay. Take care. Take care. to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. 
I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. This evening, we have a special guest, Evangelist Shirlene Mac McIntosh from Massachusetts. Okay, you're on the air. Good evening, Emmanuel. How are you? Uh, Greetings from Brockton, Massachusetts, which is 30 minutes south of Boston. How are you doing? I am blessed. Amen. Glad to hear it. And I'm glad to have you um, back on the show. It's been a while, but um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to have you back. Thank you so much for having me back. And I am excited about what you're doing. And I'm also excited that you are celebrating your 29th anniversary on this project that you're doing that is so necessary, especially in this day and time, because we have a whole generation of young people that are not being taught the truth about our black history. Amen. So we, we need more of this. We need organizations and programs like what you're doing to not only go into the schools, but go anywhere where there's an African diaspora. So I'm so excited, so proud of you, my friend. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. So would you mind if I pray for you? Oh, I don't mind. Okay. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friend and my brother and being all. Lord, I pray that you would bless the work of his hands, Lord. And wherever he goes, I pray that whatever he puts his hands to, that you would bless him indeed and continue to enlarge his territory. Lord, I pray for my brother and I pray for the area that his community that he's in, Chicago, Illinois. Father, we know that this is a hard time that we're living in, and it seems like we're coming full circle. The situations that we as a people are dealing with, we already dealt with this over 60 years ago, but we will not be, we will not be discouraged, we will not be upset and disillusioned, but we will continue to put our hands to the plow and not look back. We thank you and we praise you for the work our brother Emmanuel is doing. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you for that prayer. Um, if you don't mind, tell um, you know, my listeners uh, a little bit about your, um, your ministry and uh, your projects. Well, basically, I have been in ministry um, very close to 30 years now. Um, I am now a certified life coach. I am an author, uh, and I just finished a project, which I will be talking about in a couple of minutes. But um, I have soon be coming out a um, webinar a webinar called Releasing Damaged Emotions, and as you know, I also have a book called A Personal Guide to Live, Love, and Laugh Your Way to Making Better Choices, and my latest project, which I finished basically last year when I got um, my certification, it's called Daddy's Little World. So I'd like to talk about that for a couple of minutes. Go, go right ahead. Okay, so this is to all the ladies. Good afternoon, ladies. It's your girl, Sherry, and I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about my new life coaching program for women called Daddy's Little Girl. Let's get something out of the way right now. This program is not for the woman whose father is or was her hero. Nor is this for the woman whose father was the king of the castle with her mother being the queen and she being the princess. Forgive me, but I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the women who, like me, this was furthest from reality. One of the problems that women encounter is that their heads have been gassed up to think that men are not needed nor wanted because of the hurtful experiences with men from their past. Let me tell you something. 
My father died before I got the chance to tell him how I really felt. He died before I had the chance to connect, be approved, or give him a chance to reconcile with me. No matter whether your father was there or not, or if every male figure in your life disappointed you or took advantage of you, there's still time for healing. Please don't believe the lie of the enemy that says that all men are no good. The Lord is always good. And he wants to free us from every hurt and pain, as well as deliver us from hurting others. The second problem is we hide our pain of not having a dad around. Why do we hide our pain of being connected to a poor or non-existent relationship with our fathers? Usually, this is because we grew up seeing the perfect nuclear family on television, which was not our experience. Oftentimes, the truth was too painful or too embarrassing to deal with. And if you were anything like me, a fantasy was conjured up to keep sanity from breaking. So if your father wasn't in the home or involved in your life, then you might have a problem with receiving direction, trusting intention, and identifying love, even from God. It's true that hurt people hurt people because we don't realize how it keeps us from repentance, deliverance, forgiveness, and freedom in him. The enemy wants to keep us bound, but it's time to walk the path to healing. At some point, you will have to ask God for discernment in order to find out who you can allow into your life and who to trust, as opposed to keeping the wall up, which also keeps you in bondage. Don't shrink away from the process of healing because it will be therapeutic. Also, don't let the bad relationship with your dad cause you to set yourself up for failure in relationships with men in general. I definitely made some mistakes there. What I learned is that there are some men who really are only meant to be friends with you and nothing more. No romance, no fatherhood, just a friendship. Unfortunately, that was new for me. Thankfully, God healed those areas of damaged relationships with men for me. Let the Lord heal you from your damaged emotions and begin to open yourself up to him so that he can teach you how to have a right relationship with men. Every woman is daddy's little girl in God's eyes. Pain will blind you from this reality if you're not willing to get real and get raw about your daddy issues. It's time to go on a journey of healing and wholeness by finally dealing with what you have refused to talk about. And I dare to say, have mastered the art of wearing a mask for. If you're ready to take that journey, I will give Emmanuel my information later on in the podcast. May the Lord bless you. Well, I, I, I appreciate if you don't mind, um, just... Tell all my listeners where they can find you, and um, we can call it um, a night. Okay, absolutely. So you can inbox me on social media, on Facebook. My name is Sherilyn McIntosh, S-H-A-R-I-L-Y-N-N-M-C, capital I-N-T-O-S-H. You can also reach me on Instagram under Sensational Sherry, the Twitter at Coach Sherry, or you can contact me on WhatsApp under my name, Sherilyn McIntosh, and you can also leave your information on my website at www.lifewithcoachsherry.com. And please feel free to join the Life with Coach Sherry Facebook group as well, which is a safe space for women to share their stories judgment-free in order to gain support. And I just wanted to add one more thing, Emmanuel. In the black community, that is an issue that a lot of women have dealt with. 
And please understand, this is not a slam on single parents because single parents do an amazing job. But as children, we need both parents because we need to see the example of what a woman grows up to be and as well what a man grows up to be and how much better can it be if God is in the midst. So I wanted to thank you so much for inviting me again on your podcast. And again, congratulations on your 29th anniversary. And I can't wait to see what God does next with you. Amen. Uh, before you go, woman of God, I do want to just uh, say something um, as, it, as it pertains to what you just mentioned. Um, my Christian... Um, business that I'm trying to um, move from behind the computer, mm -hmm. uh, our mission is to help eradicate urban violence in the city of Chicago through our programs and services. Our focus, our focus is on um, assisting single black mothers as well as single black fathers. We mm -hmm. want to help them um, uh, do this uh, Christian business um, with basic resources so that way they can raise their um, children with dignity and in peace. That's all I'm trying to do. Now, like I say, it's been 29 years. You know, um, I wrote my I wrote my uh, revised book and made it plain back in 2012. The book is the book is barely selling. So what does that say to me? That's saying to me that well, maybe Black America don't really want a solution. And so, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, it's sad, it's frustrating, but somebody has to do it. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I'm putting my reputation on the line. This is how come I do my show. I want people to know what I'm trying to do. But again, I want qualified people that's going to be on my management team. And I want people to, um, we're going to screen people. Meaning that we're going to do criminal background checks. I'm not going to, um, I don't associate with con artists, um, rapists, hardened criminals, pedophiles, urban terrorists. Those, those persons are not allowed in this organization because if we allow those type of people in this business, then it's going to corrupt the business. Yes, it will. You know what, you know what I'm saying now? I, I'm like the church, you know, I'm not knocking the church, but I have to go there. Because this is a Christian business, but, you know, the church, it says, whomsoever will, let them come. So that's them. But in here, and in my house, we're screaming people. You're going to be, we're going to be, I want people to be on the up and up with me, because I'm going to be on the up and up with them. And I'm trying to bring this in those high crime, gang and drug infested communities. The communities that's lacking the resources. We're going to teach people or our members about um, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. We're going to teach our um, our members about um, group, group economics. So that way we can patronize each other rather than sitting up here patron, patronizing, uh, let's say, for example, you know, the Asian um, um, stores and going to the nail salons, going there, mm -hmm. helping those people, and the Arabs. Koreans, all those other um, groups outside of the black communities patronizing them, and yet those people are sending their money not into the black community, it goes outside of the black community. That's what our people, that's what, yes, that's what our people lack to understand. But yet you want to sit up here and keep begging these financial elites, these are the ones that caused all these problems in the first place. Mm -hmm. Marching and protesting for the past 52 years, been been on that um, hamster wheel, and you know I'm trying to tell them get off that hamster wheel. Let's pull pull our resources together with what we have. Absolutely. Now you know what I'm I'm gonna say too. Um, that's how come I'm focusing on my film now. This is my last attempt to try to do something positive, you know, for our racial group here in America. Because I ain't got time. I don't want to spend the rest of my life keep doing this stuff and being taken for a joke when this stuff is real. This, these are real issues. Yes, it is. But uh, yet, no support. I don't have no support from any black churches here in, in Chicago, nor any black organizations. And that's fine. Wow. That's fine. That's how come I'm sharing my story. 
Now, you know what I want to tell you, um, Evangelist McIntosh? Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, once I start making money, everybody's going to want to come out the woodwork and want to say, oh, congratulations, I know you can do it, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. Ain't nothing changing. 29 years, I stood on um, what I've been saying, and I'm not going to change even when I make money. Everybody's still going to be screened. Everything that I've written in that revised book, we're going to carry that out to the fullest because we're going to stay focused. Mm -hmm. And we're going to expand this organization. Well, I, like I said, I want to have this as for credibility before we expand it to Africa, uh, mm -hmm. starting in South Africa. But um, I want to have that credibility so when I go to South Africa, I don't have to go over there trying to explain who I am and all that stuff. My work will be able to speak for itself. Exactly. But I'm going to let people know it was 29 years that black America here in Chicago rejected me. And it's an, even in the God's word, it says that um, the, if um, I'm just paraphrasing, if a city or a person don't receive you in that city, um, rush them off your, your, your shoes and go somewhere else. Yeah. So I don't have to. Hey, I don't have to just. But again, I'm not this. I'm not trying to run away from Chicago. All I'm trying to say is what's going on here in Chicago is in every inner city in America. That's right. Of the same right. problems. So I'm just trying to get it started here. I'm going to turn it over to qualified people that's going to help me uh, manage the organization so that way um, I can expand it to Africa. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, I will say this on the air. You and I have been uh, connected on Facebook for quite some time, and I want to connect you to some people that I know that are about the same thing that you are, just in a different area. So offline, I will definitely be in contact with you so we can help you to get the word out and to help you to be connected to some other people that are doing the same thing that you are so that we can start a connection with other people. Hey man, I, I, hey man I'm, I'm for that. But I, uh, I do want to mention one other thing though before we um, call it a night with, the, um, with this call. Um, I want to through this Christian business, connect the diaspora with continental Africans because I reach out to a lot of Africans. Um, I'm looking at my um, calling or mission as, you know, sort of similar to like Moses, sort of speak. That 400 years of bondage is up. You know, black Americans have been in, you know, America for 400 years. We're still being treated like second, third, fourth, fifth class citizens. I want to try to reach out to the youth and let them know that they don't have to live like this. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I, um, I'm going to um, practice what I preach. I am going to apply for dual citizenship in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'm encourage my group members to do the same thing. We're going to also offer uh, African trips so that way we won't just be behind a computer. We're going to physically go over there and, you know, uh, network with people, um, mm -hmm. be able to organize and be able to um, start businesses over there. And also, um, like I say, I'm going to encourage my uh, group members to apply for dual citizenship. So that way they'll have options rather than, you know, keep sitting up here begging the financial elite here in America for basic resources. Road cops now, you know, they can come look at what happened with um, Breonna Taylor. You know, they can come in your home, kill you, and then, you know, it's no big deal. That's not right. No, enough is enough. Enough is enough. But I'm just saying, black people, let them, I want us to know that we have options. We're not, we don't have to be under this bondage. And that's in God's word, too. You know, he's, he set us free. Yes, so that, I'm just saying, if, you know, that's, that's what this organization is about. And I know that this is spiritual warfare at its best. Yes, it is. And, you know, I'm using God's words, too, you know. But, again, I'm not trying to, you know, hide behind religion. I'm just letting people know up front that, you know, that this is a legitimate organization and um we, you know we just got to get our, our our act together absolutely okay so that's that's we're going to call it um a night for this um segment of the program all right we have um uh one of our um contributors evangelist stephanie o'neill okay you're on the air 
Yes, I want to let you know that um, Mr. Barbie, Mr. Manuel Barbie, he has a great vision. And if people would just take the time to really, you know, get to know him, um, he's a great man. He has a great vision, as I said. Um, and his vision is to um, help bring the people out of, out of the ghetto. And um, to let them see that it's a, it's a better way of life and that you don't have to sell drugs, you don't have to steal, you don't have to vandalize, you don't have to, you know, do these things to become successful in life. And um, he's college educated. Um, he, he, he's very resourceful in, in knowledge and wisdom. He um, studies up on a lot of things, you know, concerning, you know, the needs of the people that God gave him this vision many years ago and um he's wanting you know people to really catch fire and catch passion to this you know because it's really needed um he's trying to provide a better way for people and to see you know that um it's it's greater like i said it's a greater life that you might have been born a certain way but you don't have to end a certain way that so your your beginning does not have to be your ending. You know, some people started out in the ghetto as um, I myself, you know, I've lived in ghetto. I've lived in the projects before when my mother and dad separated. She could not afford the life that my dad could. So I myself have lived in those type of, you know, um, conditions. Um, my mother did the best she could do um, amongst crime and all kinds of different things. But thank God, God brought me out of it and, and I was a you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have to bring my kids up in that, in that way, but I don't look back on it in a bad way. I look at it as, you know, it's, it's like a um, stepping stone to make where I am now. And I said that to say that it, being a stepping stone, it does not have to be the place that you have to stay. And um, right now, you know, um, in this world, the way things are, you know, a lot of people are looking for hope. Some people are so downtrodden that they going through so much and they just feel like there is no hope and he wants to show you that there is hope on the other side and that life doesn't have to be that hard you know as you think it can because it's, it's a better way and I believe that if he had more support from our people you know because it's, it's a legit vision it's a beautiful vision and I do believe that Yahweh Elohim which is God and Yeshua HaMashiach which is Jesus gave him this great um, vision. You know, God always sends out people to solve a problem. And um, the problem is, you know, these genocides, you know, a while back, I'm, I'm just going to put the Lord put in my spirit, that's why I know that I am a part of what's going on with um, grassroots community activist movement. Last year, the Lord put in my spirit, genocide. So I'm like, Lord, what part is a genocide? And I, I looked it up in the dictionary, and it meant the mass killing of people of a certain ethnic group or whatever. And so at, at first I didn't understand why the Lord placed in my spirit, but evidently God has a burden. And, you know, God always has a burden. The word of God says, for the pressure of the poor, for the sign of the needy, that will I rise. And so God has given um, Emmanuel Barbie the burden of bringing out his people that are, are, are poor and unjustly treated and um, afflicted to bring them out and to show them that there is a better way and to stop these genocides because if you watch the news, it's always, you know, people, especially in the urban ghettos, you know, that are, you know, shooting up and shooting up each other and all this gang activity and all these things right here, selling drugs and all these things. And a lot of times they do that because they feel like there's no other way. They feel there's no hope. But with um, Emmanuel uh, Barbie's vision, it is, as I said, you know, to bring the youth out of these games and all these things to show them that um, there is a second chance at life and that you can live better. And that, you know, uh, with the docudramas that he wants to do and the dance stand and the, you know, all these things that he want to do, you know, within the vision, he wants to see people's lives change. And that's the thing, you know, he wants them to use their talents and he wants them to use their gifts. And um, he also, you know, offer incentives, you know, for people, you know, to um, even use his, um, his, um, his websites, you know, to even promote your own businesses and things like that. He's not trying to, you know, 
be the top dog. He's trying to show you that he wants to work along with us, you know, to try to, you know, us building each other up, which is God's plan. You know, the, the Bible says, you know, the Sean should bear the furnace of the week and that we're supposed to work, work together. You know, like the Bible also says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? So, you know, when, um, I just really, really advise you all to really, really catch on to the vision that God has given him for America as well as Africa. He wants to help bring up Africa too and modernize Africa and open up, you know, um, you know, different kind of opportunities for those that are in Africa that are in impoverished, you know, um, situations, you know, that, you know, to bring the people out of the ghettos. He just wants them to have a better life. And, and I feel like, you know, that this vision is wonderful and it benefits everyone. And I, you know, I would really, really um, advise you, if you would, to be a monthly contributor to, um, you know, Sam referral request, Emmanuel Barbie, and to look and to see how God is really using him um, and all the different aspects of the vision that he has. Um, that you go to YouTube and watch his videos, you know, and see his heart and learn his heart and see the things that, you know, how, how big his heart is for people and to see that God has given him um, a big heart you know, for for the world and for the nation, and to see people's lives change for such a time as this. And um, he has an online store where they sell um, t-shirts, they sell coffee mugs, they um, sell beach towels, handbags, and um, etc. You know, and all of these proceeds will go towards his film that he has, um, Hood Liberator. You know about the um the Willie Lynch um syndrome. You know, trying to he really want people to come out of that mindset that you know we got to work together. We can't fight against one another. You know, we need one another. It's a great need for us to stand together. And um he's trying to get up to five hundred thousand dollars for the film. And also he has a book that's um about Black America. It's out there, and I think he says the the ebook is nine nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Correct. He also has the paperback also that's out there, and you know just take this. I call it my textbook. It's not a book that I believe in a person should try to scam through. I believe you need to really, really read it and let it marinate because it's not just an ordinary book, in my opinion. It's a book with a mighty, mighty vision. That's why I'm taking my time to really read it and get it in my spirit. You know, I'm not trying to scam through it and just say I read the book. But I'm really trying to get it in my spirit because I know that it's a need for the people. And as I said, you know, if you, you know, get his book, you will really, really be, you know, blessed by it. When you, and then you can see his heart and understand his heart. It's called a solution for black America, reclaiming, rebuilding, and restoring the urban ghettos in America. And he explains to us, you know, his life and he shares his testimony and the things he's been through and also the total vision of what he would have that God has given him. So, um, and he's also, he has knowledge in how to write a book because he's written his own. He has, how he knows how to edit. He knows how to show people so many, he's so gifted and so knowledgeable about so many different facets and aspects and things that, you know, if you would really get to know this man and you would really, you know, link up with him, I believe your life would be blessed. Because as I said, he has a big heart for people. He wants to see change. And he want, we, we want to end to these genocides, these killing of our own race. You know, he wants black people to come up and to see their true value. And he has a great vision. Well, uh, one, uh -huh. one minute, God, may I interject and say some things? Oh, yes, of course. I just want to say I thank you very much for um, for you um, just pouring your heart out and just sharing um, uh, your experience about working with me. I want people to understand... Um, that I'm not running for public office. I want them to understand that. I want them to understand that, um, uh, well, uh, for our members, for us to not just, you know, keep, beg, you know, 
being on this uh, hamster wheel. You know, our people been marching and protesting for 52 years. And ain't nothing changed. The financial elites don't want to, they don't care about what's happening to, um, especially poor blacks. Now, it's other racial groups, they're going through their things, but I want to focus on our own people first. And that's what God called me to do, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm just going to do that. Before I was a Christian, I was a black man. So I want to help my racial group first. And um, this organization is geared toward trying to strengthen single black mothers as well as single black fathers that's trapped in these inner cities. Again, I don't have any uh, churches here in the city of Chicago that's willing to work with me, nor do, nor do I have any black organizations as well. The reason why is because I'm quote unquote, I'm not famous. So they're looking at me as, you know, oh, you well, you're, you know, you're just a big dreamer. So I'm like, okay, nope. All right, we have, all right, we have um, another contributor of Gracam, Missionary Savannah Rush. So go ahead, um, Missionary uh, Rush, tell, um, you know, our listeners, you know, about your experience, you know, working with me and, you know, also being, you know, part of this great uh, organization. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor God. Um, I just wanted to say that um, it has been phenomenal to work with you. You are the best when it comes to striving and helping people do their best selves and all that God has called them to be. You are very consistent and very purpose-driven. That's the first thing I noticed about you. Um, I remember the day you inboxed me about being a guest on your podcast. I have never been on someone's podcast before me even being a blogger, but I was nervous on the download, and you sent that real quick because you are the best people's person. So your personnel and vibe just made it more comfortable for me to jump into it and do it. You're very headstrong and walking into your identity unapologetically, and that is my favorite thing as well about you. We need more people like you in the world because you have this soul of giving. You are a giver, and you are a person that has a part of helping people succeed, and I'm honored to work with you and also the years to come while fair. Also, this amazing cause that you are doing, the change that you are stamping and marking into the world, it is so near this organization during this point in the season that we are in. It shows such empowerment and God is really doing some awesome and mind blowing things through it. Especially with the film project that you're working on now. Wow, I'm so excited for it and the change that it's going to do in people's lives. What you are doing now for your podcast and the grassroots community movement is something that is going to do, that is something that's going to go big in 2020, 2021 because of what God is about to shift through it. It not only gives our community a voice, but it also gives our community freedom. And I'm going to tell you, for anyone that is listening to this podcast right now, this is a show that I recommend everyone to join and also the organization to support it because it's not only going to change two people's lives, it's going to change the entire nation, and that is what we are called to do. God knows what he's doing this season, and he knows what confirmation to give you, and I'm going to tell you that this organization moves to something to be a part of it. And I'm going to turn it back over to you, man of God. All right, woman of God, but you know how I do. I want you to... um. You know, before I close this um, segment out, I want you to tell uh, my listeners um, where they can find you as well as about your organization, too. Because, again, that's what I'm, this is what um, the grassroots community activist movement is all about. We want to be able to um, be a blessing to others. We, I want to make sure that everybody's going to uh, benefit from this type of business, this Christian mm -hmm. business. So I want people to know about yours. Um, also, I want my listeners to understand that um, this organization is geared toward helping um, broken um, black families that's constantly overlooked. We are, and you know, I'm here in the city of Chicago. The crime rate is just off the charts, and, that, and that's not nothing to be proud of. People are trying to get out of Chicago. So, um, God has called, this is where I'm at, God has called me to um, create a positive business, but however, 
However, 20, uh, 29 years I've been on the front lines trying to get uh, find people in my city to work with me. And I have been taken as a joke because, um, I would just say because a lot of our people are caught up in this Willie Lynch mentality. I got mine, you get yours. Yes. And that's not cool. That's not cool at all. But I thank the Lord for the internet. And uh, I thank the Lord for social media. Um, missionary Savannah Rush, she's not in Chicago. She's way out in uh, Alabama. So that's a blessing that I'm able to connect with uh, a sister like her. But my goal is to still do the best that I can through this uh, film project to um, raise the capital that we need, which is going to be 500000 Yeah. Raise that capital so that way I can hire a quality film crew as well as quality actors. The proceeds from the film will put me in a better position financially so that I can hire qualified black middle class professionals. If I can't find them here in, in the city of Chicago, then I'm looking beyond Chicago for them to come here and, and uh, work with me and Sister Renee. Starting on the west side of Chicago, we're going to cover Austin, Garfield Park, and as well as North Lawndale. That's the west side of Chicago. Then we're going to eventually expand to the south side of Chicago in order to try to um, make a positive impact in the black community as well as um, for credibility because we want to, um, through this um, Christian business, we want to reconnect with the African continent. And um, I want to bring the best of the diaspora from uh, America to, we're going to say, starting in South, um, South Africa to help uh, with um, African infrastructure, to help improve those infrastructures. Um, I would say not just in the cities, but also in the rural areas that's overlooked, the so-called, quote unquote, slums of Africa. And make our footprint there and then also expand to 10 other African nations. That's all I'm trying to do. As well as, you know, for us to learn how to work with each other. Pull our resources together instead of uh, being on this um, hamster wheel. Begging the financial elites for, you know, we're crying for um, freedom, justice, and equality. And they don't want to give us that, so that's on them. So we have to use um, our talents and skills to better ourselves. And also, I want to encourage my, um, my, our members to, you know, apply for dual citizenship. So that way they don't have to just keep um, being treated as third, fourth, and fifth class citizens in the United States. I'm not telling everyone to give up their um, American status, but, you know, for us to think outside of America. Bring our talents and skills to the continent where um, that needs it. Help rebuild um, the African um, infrastructure and be a blessing to the, um, our um, continental African brothers and sisters. Also, I want to be able to build a bridge between the diaspora and continental Africans. So that's how come um, eventually once we get this business started here in Chicago, we can start launching those um, African tours and connect with um, African entrepreneurs. And if they work um, through our business, then it could be a win-win situation for people that's in the inner cities that's not, um, that may not be able to um, leave America because of, you know, situations. Maybe they're behind in um, child support and things like that. So what we want to do is we want to create, um, I call it uh, satellite communities within the inner cities. But we'll do the best that we can, but we don't want to just sit up here and keep marching and protesting for another 52 years. That's not cool. That's not getting us anywhere. And um, I understand, you know, people keep trying to take me for joke, but hey, that's how come I wrote my story. I wrote my vision and made it plain in my revised book, so I'm still pushing that. I'm encouraging everyone to please uh, read my story, uh, read my uh, ebook which is $9.99. That's one way how you can help um, turn this vision into a reality. 
also our virtual um, stores. You know, buy our coffee mugs, our um, face mask, t-shirts. That's how we're trying to generate capital. We're not just trying to sit up here asking for donations per se. Yeah. We have stuff that people can use, you know, especially like the face mask because of this COVID-19. And, um, you know, it's going to, um, the film project is going to put me in that position so that way I can um, create jobs for our youth. So basically, I, I'm trying to reach, because I'm, I'm from Generation X, and I was unable to reach my uh, generation. You know, they were too full of this Willie Lynch mess. So we got to um, destroy that stuff. That's how come I want to create my film and um, put my story on the screen for someone to play me. Um, and for this um, film to be a success. And also, I'm praying for praying that my Christian um, brothers and sisters will pray that this um, film will be a success. I'm not putting myself uh, out here um, to be humiliated and, you know, to be a failure. That's Because there's no failure in God. I'm, I know that. I know my calling. So I want to make sure I have qualified people that know what they're doing. That's all. But I'm not for no games. In this uh, Christian business, you know, uh, I don't associate with um, con artists, hardened criminals, urban terrorists. We don't want those type of people up in, in this business at all. So that's how come we're going to be screening people, do um, criminal background checks. And we're going to have thumb technology so that way we can keep tabs on who's doing what in the business, not just people that's in the business trying to just, you know, freeload and, you know, just try to tear the business down. We want people that's going to be on the up and up. And we also welcome non-black sympathizers. They're welcome to join us, but we as black people, we have to take the lead because this is for black people. This organization is to help us. So other organizations, I mean other, um, I would say, um, nationalities and all um, other racial groups, they can join us, but we're going to be front and center because this is um, to help um, the black family. Yes. For us, you know, to um, pull our resources together. That's all. So that's all I'm trying to do. So thank you again for um, calling in. And again, yes, it's been 29 years. I've been pushing this. It's not easy. I don't like um, being overlooked. I don't like the fact that uh, I don't have support from my own family, but um, I thank the Lord um, for giving me this passion because, you know, I don't see up too many other people doing this. So a lot of people w wouldn't even go this long. They would probably gave up within 10 years, but that's how come I'm glad that I have um, technology on my side so that way I can get that message out there to the masses this way as well. That's how come I have an African group called Gurkai of Africa. I have connections with um, local Africans in South um, Africa. Um, my admin for uh, my um, Gurkai of African group is um, Evangelist Martha Mumba. And she's right there in South Africa. So, you know, I'm, yeah. So, I'm doing my part. I'm doing the best that I can. And all these different groups, I have 14 different groups on Facebook. All of those groups represent... Um, my Christian business, even though some of them are not uh, Christian, um, some of them are secular, and I'm going to replicate the same thing in this real business, but I want people to read my story first so that way they'll know what they're getting themselves involved with. This is a no-nonsense type of business. People that want to be running, playing games and stuff, I don't want to talk to those persons. I want people that want more out of life, and I want us to project the best of black culture. And I want to, I want us to connect with our um, Afro Caribbeans. We have to work together, as well as our brothers and sisters in Brazil. And again, I'm not about just sitting up here complaining about the government and complaining about the white man. I'm gonna use the resources and talents and skills that my Creator has given me to connect with other like-minded people for us to build. Just like uh, Nehemiah, you know, he built the 
he rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem, and he didn't do that by himself. So, yeah. and this organization is not about me per se. This is about us. This is um, it's gonna be a, like a, I would call it a work, work um, cooperative. So you know, people, you know, this all of us is gonna be able to benefit from it, but it's membership based. That's all I'm saying. So I'm gonna close close it at the, at this time. All right, we have um, another call, Evangelist Martha Mumba. She's um, a very big um, contri um, contribu contributor to this organization. Uh, she's over. Uh, she helps me uh, manage my uh, African group. Grakai of Africa. So without any further delay, here she is. So, okay, go ahead and um, uh, tell, I want you to tell my listeners a little bit about your business and then, you know, tell them about your experience, you know, uh, with working with me. All right, good morning, our dear esteemed listeners. It's a privilege for me to come on this show this morning. Yeah, and I just want to share with you my experience working with the grassroots community activist movement and with uh, our leader, Mr. Emmanuel Barbie, this morning. Yeah, so as you have heard, my name is Evangelist Martha Mumba from Pretoria, South Africa. And I really thank God uh, for for connecting me to Mr. Babi and to this great movement in my life, as well as uh, as well as uh, my family, so privileged to be in, uh, to be connected to this vision. Yeah, I'm a business woman uh, who is into supply and uh, close border trading in South Africa and Zambia and in the neighboring countries. I supply goods and services yeah, to, the, to the shops, starting from groceries and phone accessories around Pretoria. So I'm a, a single lady, I'm a single woman and has been hustling as a leader in order to put food on the table and to support my household financially in different things, which has not been very much as uh, an easy task for me. So, as you can see that our economy is like in Africa at the moment, they're not doing that well. Yeah, making, making it tough for growing businesses, especially in the time that, uh, in the time of the pandemics that we were passing through in the lockdowns, which has made things even harder. Hence, I felt a need to diversify and venture into some online business, even without knowing where to start and what to do. I was jumping from one online post to another just to try to find what I can do online and earn some honest money. My search came to an end yeah, uh, the time I met uh, Mr. Baby online and we became uh, business partners and we became business partners and um, for that, I really appreciate God because from that time, the help that I, 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 I needed, I got it from him. And I feel he is the man that God has, uh, has uh, predestined in my life to help in, in, that way, in such a way that he has been of great help to me, like uh, teaching me the things that I, do not, I did not know, like using some some apps and uh, how to podcast, how to open a YouTube channel and uh, how I can contribute and uh, how I can contribute to the to our racial group and to our community as large.
to our community at large. So now I'm 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 proud that I'm able to make podcasts on my own and I'm learning, I'm getting there whereby I can be of much value uh, to the world and uh, to this organ through this organization of the Kritai. He also added me to his community groups, uh, some of which I am administrator, and I thank God that I can do this now, which I couldn't do before. Working with Mr. Barbie and uh, Sister Renee in this movement has been a life-changing experience and an opportunity to save in this great vision, adding value to global black family by helping to stop the genocide in America, as well as educating, mobilizing black Africans in the continent, as well as in the diaspora, to come on board and join this movement, which will bring change and serious development in our racial group, as well as in the African continent. So the program, uh, the pro, the. So this morning, I just want to call on each and every member of this movement and everyone who will be listening to this show. That please let us join in as a force into this movement because there is a, there is much to be done as we have we have read. Uh, in the book which our leader wrote and if you haven't read before i just want to encourage you to go on and buy that book and read all the plans that our leader the great plans that our leader has uh for our racial groups which are which you cannot be compared to any anyone in this world they are great plans and it's a great vision so i just want to encourage us this time we, we will not give up let's go on support this vision just by going to our virtual stores and uh, buy our products there buy the book read the book understand the vision buy some different items from the from the store by doing that we are contributing we are contributing to the vision which will enable us to move to the next level taking the 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 vision on a, on the spotlight so i really thank God for all this and I also want to ask you that also be involved to make our vision known to everyone by participating in the podcast, by participating in the shows that our leader is uh, organizing for us. This is the least that we can do and uh, it, won't, it won't go unnoticed because uh, by putting our voice together, I know for sure and for certain that we will be heard. The world is yet to hear about us. And it's a blessing for us who are starting uh, with it now that we will be written as the, as the brave ones who championed this cause for humanity. So like you said, uh, Mr. Badi, you said that you also want to say something if you can say something or ask me the same word, then I'm here. All right, woman of God, thank you very much. Um, well, basically, I do want to just share this. Again, I've been pushing Grickham for 29 years. Now, that's yeah. that, to me, is an insult. It's an insult, um, Evangelist Martha Mungu, and ask me why. Why? Because Black Amer our people here in the United States, mm -hmm. they would rather be on a, it's called a hamster wheel. That means you're just going around in circles, begging the financial elites, which are the same people that cause all these problems in the first place. They prefer to sit up here and march and protest, begging for um, 
uh, justice, equality, and freedom, and those same people don't care. And um, it, our pe black Americans has been doing that for the past 52 years. You know what I'm saying? Since the 60s. Now, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life behind a computer, you know, sharing my ideas and all that stuff. I'm trying to take my ideas to the next level. So I want to connect with people such as yourself, continental Africans. I want, I'm, I'm praying that um, the Lord would um, touch people uh, in our African group called Grakai of Africa, that they would step up, share my information. All I need, I don't need a whole lot of people. I just need a few people, a few people that will work with me and Sister Renee, um, let's say that would um, have to have um, family and friends from the continent to work with me and Sister Renee because they're already here in America. So that's how come I'm trying to reach out to um, Afri um, continental African and um, African immigrants that's here in the United States as well as Afro-Caribbeans. Because yeah. Evangelist Martha Numba, once I start making money, everybody's going to want to work with us then. You know that, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, that's what's going to happen. But um, ain't nothing changing. I'm going to stick to what God has put in my heart. I cannot have con artists, hardened criminals, rapists, pedophiles, urban terrorists in this organization, so I want to make sure that um, we start a clean, a clean slate. I'm not looking for the government to help me. I'm reaching out to us, the masses, the soil. This is for us. And I want to start it here in America, trying to help my people that's trapped in American ghettos. That's where I came from. I know what it's like there. I didn't like that situation being mugged and um, constantly, you know, having to um, worry about, you know, um, struggling, being, um, it's just being overlooked by society. All our people, black people, have to do is pull our resources together. You understand? And the people that I run across, all they want to do is they don't want to hear that. They just want to keep complaining the white man is the white man that and complain about the government. So that's called here in America, that's called a Willie Lynch mentality. On the continent, our people have a colonized um, mentality. They think the Western um, culture is better than African culture. That's not true. And so through this organization, we want to help change that stuff so that way we connect with other like-minded continental Africans. I want to, um, once I get this organization up and running through, um, once we have our film project fully funded and made and the uh, proceeds from that, it will put me in a better position financially so I can hire qualified people so that way we can launch our um, African tours. We're going to first come to you, South Africa. So be ready. Yeah, be ready. I want you to be able to have, you know, I want you to uh, be a tour guide for us. And, you know, for us to meet other, um, I would say, African entrepreneurs to work with us so that way we can um, utilize, you know, um, I would say, products and services that you want to sell. You can sell that to our people that's in the uh, inner cities. And so that way it's going to be a win-win situation. We're going to help the African economy as well as help um, the inner cities. This is so powerful. Yes. That's all I've been trying to do. 29 years. That's how come I want to make sure I get this, um, my story in terms of taking it to the next level as a film. So that way it could reach the masses. For people that don't like to read. Some people, Evangelist Martha Mumba, say that this is a scam. A book is a scam. A book is not a scam. Those are uneducated people that talk like that. 
So those are the kind of people um, we got to scream that, hey, they can't be a part of us if they're that, if they think that little and they want to sit up here and just complain about the issues and don't want to elevate themselves. We have to uh, dis, um, separate ourselves from those type of people. And we want to reach the youth so that way the youth don't, it doesn't be, this mentality doesn't continue. So we come against here in the United States against that Willie Lynch mentality. And on the African continent, we come against that colonized, um, yeah, colonized mindset or mentality, thinking that the West is better than African culture. And I understand. That's why, yes, a lot of um, Africans do want to leave um, Africa because, you know, a lot of those people that's in power, they're not looking out for the citizens. Exactly. And that's sad. So we will take the lead to help our members. If you're not a member, all we can do is pray for those persons, show them tough love, and keep it moving. Exactly. Now I am going to share this with you too before um, this, this um, our time run out. Uh, Non-black sympathizers, they're welcome to join us. Okay. They're welcome to join us because I don't have another 29 years to waste. So I have to reach out to other racial groups, but I want them to know that we have to get our house in order first as black people. That's why I'm reaching out to my own first. And we're going to show, we want to display the best of black culture. But we're not going to let some other um, racial other racial groups come in and hijack our stories. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real about that. And so that's one of the reasons a lot of people don't like me too, you know. I mean, I'm just saying our own racial group. Because they, they're used to kissing up and all that stuff, you know, to get to where they want to be and all that stuff. I don't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. So hey, even if this doesn't come take, uh, if, if it doesn't come to pass in my lifetime, I already did the groundwork. There's nothing more that I can do. I wrote the vision and made it plain in my revised book. Now I'm trying to take it to the next level in terms of turning 